Hey everyone, today I'm testing out a new lens from Sony. It is the 16 to 25 millimeter f2.8 G lens. It's a constant f2.8 aperture zoom, uh, and it goes from 16 millimeter all the way to 25. We've come down to Canterbury. It's a city in Kent. It's got a big old cathedral in it. You might've heard of it. It's also got very old kind of windy streets. So we're gonna test out the, the wide angle nature of this lens and kind of how much we can get in without having to move too far back. But we've also got beautiful flowers out, so the scenery is brightening up. I'm gonna take a look. So let's go through some of the physical details of this lens. We've talked about the fact that it's a 2.8 aperture throughout the zoom range. Uh, it's a 67 millimeter filter thread. It's got a little kind of snap on hood. There's no lock on the hood, but it seems to snap on you know, fairly reliably. Um, the 16 to 25 millimeter zoom range is, it's unusual. And I'll get onto that in a bit. It's, it's closest kind of analog that you'd think of is, is either the 16 to 35 or the 12 to 24 millimeter focal lengths from, from Sony. Um, so it's kind of a smaller in between of those two if you're looking for something that's light and fits well with the body. And it is light, it's just over 400 grams and it balances really nicely with the A7C series cameras and it would go very well on an A7 Mark IV as well. The aperture ring, going back to the controls that we have uh, available to us, we have a, a clicking aperture ring which goes from f2.8 to f22. If I hold it up here right next to the mic, you can hear it click, click, click all the way around. For a photographer, that's great. I really like a clicky aperture ring because I know how many uh, how many stops or how many thirds of a stop I'm moving um, without having to look down at the camera. For video, that clicking is, is annoying and it jumps the aperture down. So you can de-click it with the switch there and then suddenly, oh, all my aperture movements are silent. That means that if you're going from a kind of darker interior, stepping out to this cloister and you wanted a continuous shot, you could smoothly open the aperture without jumping. It's driving an 11 blade circular aperture ring. Uh, that means that you get really, really smooth bokeh, both at f2.8 uh, and it also means you get a really bright sunburst when you stop down and you're shooting into the light. Other controls that this lens has are, is a, uh, a customizable function button so that can be a focus preset if you know that you're going to need to jump your focus to a certain position uh, and it has the switch for autofocus and manual focus so fairly you know standard not not many bells and whistles but you don't need it on a on a useful and everyday zoom lens. In a second, we're going to hand this over to Luke so that Luke can take some video with this lens um, because there's more than just the aperture, the 11 bladed aperture going on inside this that makes this a great lens. There's two linear motors in here that are really fast. They drive the internal focusing so there's no external movement on the focusing. That means that focus breathing is really well controlled um, and also it's compatible with Sony's focus breathing compensation. Uh, so we're going to test that out and uh, show you of what that means in terms of the edge of the frame coming in as you pull or push focus front and back and this cathedral should be a great place to show that off. In terms of uh, focusing kind of macro photography minimum focusing distance this isn't a this isn't a macro lens but it can focus very close all wide angle lenses can focus very close um, so you know that's not saying that this is a, as a superb macro lens and one to choose for that um, it can focus to about 18 centimeters, um, 18 centimeters with autofocus, uh, with the manual focus, which is driven by this ring at the front here, um, you can focus to 17 centimeters if you, you know, need that one extra centimeter of closer focusing. Another thing I'd say about the build of this lens is that it is weather resistant and that's good because the, um, the 16 mil does push that zoom element out a bit. You've got that movement coming in and out. That's not focusing, that's the zooming. Um, and it pushes out when you go wider.
So before I wrap up with my final thoughts, I just wanted to share with you some test images that we did where we looked at this uh, lens's sharpness. Because we're shooting on the A7C Mark II, which isn't Sony's highest resolution sensor, uh, we got some help from our colleagues in Fixation and Wex Rental, and we got hold of a A7R5 and a 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 G Master lens, so we can do some lens comparisons on a really, really high res sensor. So we're going to bring those up for you now to have a look at, and they'll be labeled up at the top what lens we're shooting on. I would say at f16, when we were doing our sharpness tests, trying to get the optimal point of each lens. In the center of the frame, perfectly sharp, did a really good job. At the edges in the corners, at 16 millimeters, as you would expect, you get a little bit of stretching of the detail, and I think that was more noticeable on the 16 to 25 G than on the G Master lens, which again, you're paying at least a thousand pounds more for a G Master lens, uh, not just for that extra zoom range, but also the extra engineering they put into that series of lenses. In the corners, I did notice uh, beyond the actual kind of sharpness in the corners, the chromatic aberration was also much more noticeable on this lens with quite a strong green fringe that I noticed coming out of the images. Whereas with the 16-35 G Master, it was more of a kind of slight glow. Obviously, both of those are well controlled when you turn on the in-camera um, chromatic aberration correction. Um, the other thing I'd point out is that I kept the distortion correction on for the 16 to 35 because this lens, I can't turn the distortion correction off in camera. So I didn't think that was quite a fair comparison. To wrap up with my final thoughts of this lens, I, Sony sent this lens to us to test with an A7C Mark II, they also sent the 24 to 50 millimeter uh, G lens. That's another little compact f2.8 lens. They, this kit is fantastically small and fantastically light. Um, the lens, as I said, is 409 grams. The reason that Sony have provided this kit is that the the unique selling point of this lens is that it's so small. I found the the reduced zoom range a little bit restrictive. I suppose I'm used to a 16 to 35. Sony also make a range of 12 to 24 millimeter lenses, which give you that extra reach at the wide end. And in, on both occasions, I, I found myself kind of hitting the end of the zoom a little bit earlier than I was expecting. If I owned this for a very long time, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd get to know it really well, and I wouldn't worry so much about hitting that limit. I'd know the limitations of my kit. But, if a 2.8 is really, really important to you and a lighter weight lens is really, really important to you, then, then this lens gives you that. The, the compromise is the zoom, but everything else is there. It's really sharp. It's, uh, it's a zoom and it's 2.8 all the way through, which means that we could, we could dive into a cathedral when the weather turns and we could keep on making images. The price is £1,249 at launch uh, and you can get your pre-orders in on the link below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, do all the right stuff for YouTube and we'll be back with the next review well, as soon as the next bit of kit comes in. We'll see you then.